Welcome to the virtual college exploration for all North Carolina and South Carolina students sponsored by the Carolinas Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers and StriveScan. We appreciate you all joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Uh, your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. Uh, this is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at cacro.org. That's C-A-C-R-A-O dot org. This presentation is being recorded and we will be and will be available uh, within about one week on that same website, cacro.org. I'd now like to turn it over to our presenters. All right, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this evening for It's a Beautiful Day in the Berg, uh, Colleges and Universities in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Uh, give me just a second. I'm going to get my screen shared with you, and we'll, we'll kick it off, and we're going to start off with Converse College. Um, while I'm pulling up my, my screen, I'm going to give them a chance to introduce themselves um, for the rest of the panel. Hi, everyone. My name is Michelle Hernandez. I am a senior admissions counselor at Converse College. Hey guys, my name is Harry Cochran and I am the Associate Director of Admissions at Spartan Methodist College. Thank y'all for being here tonight. Hey everyone, my name is Rhett Sapo, Senior Assistant Director of Admission for Wofford College. Um, thank y'all for all tuning in tonight. All right. Well, thank you for joining us again. As you can tell by the title of our presentation, we are all colleges located here in the Berg of South Carolina. Um, so again, my name is Michelle Hernandez and I am an admissions counselor here at Converse College. I'm also an alum of the institution. So I have a little bit of an insider's perspective because I was a student here once upon a time. Um, so just some quick facts about who we are and what we do. Um, so we have a 12 to one student to faculty ratio ratio. Um, this doesn't mean that in every class you're only going to have 12 students, but it means on average there's only going to be 12 students. So that, knows that, that means that professors know who you are, they know what you want to do, they know how to help you get to kind of your next steps, whether that's a master's program or internships or things like that. 85% um, of our students receive financial aid. Um, so this is all dependent on obviously when you apply, but also when you file your FAFSA on October 1st, which is a national date. 85% um, of our students will receive some form of financial aid. Our student body hugs around 1,300. This includes our undergraduate master's program and our doctorate program. For undergraduate students, so you, we hug typically around 850 students. Um, and then 90% of our students graduate in four years. And this is a huge number that we are incredibly proud of. Um, the national average for college is six years. And you might be wondering why that's important or why that matters. Well, if you need a fifth or sixth year of college, it comes completely out of pocket. So any grants and scholarships you got, they don't count because they're only for four years. So we're incredibly proud that 90% of our students get it done in four years. And I think that's directly related back to our um, class ratio and our faculty involvement with our students. So the big thing, how to apply. Um, so our application is always free and it is available on our website. Our application is open. We have already started accepting students for fall 2021 and we've already had students commit for fall 2021, which is super exciting. Um, we are also on the Common App, but the Common App charges. So if that's not something you're already gonna do, just go directly to our website um, where it's free. Once we have your application, we'll need your high school transcripts and then your optional ACT or SAT test scores, um, but we can answer more questions about that later. Um, so everyone then always asks about scholarships. When every student is applying to Converse College, you are automatically applying for our endowed academic scholarship. And so this is based off of your GPA and or test scores. If you receive an endowed academic scholarship, you will automatically be invited to our Scholars Day, which is when you have the opportunity to interview with staff and faculty for additional scholarships. So how to know if a college is for you? The best way is to visit. 
Whether it's me, Wofford, Upstate, or SMC, the best way to know if a campus is for you is to get on campus. So right now, even though we are in the middle of a global pandemic, we are still conducting visits five days a week, and we offer three visit slots throughout the day. Um, if you're not comfortable coming to campus, I totally understand. We also have virtual visits. Um, so if you go to our website, you can sign up for either a virtual visit so we can Zoom one-on-one, -on -one, or you can come to our beautiful campus and I can walk you around. But again, the best way, you gotta walk the walk, breathe the air, and eat the food to know if a college is for you. Um, we offer over 35 majors and minors here at Converse College. So we have um, a School of Humanities, we have a School of the Arts. We also actually within the School of the Arts have a conservatory, so the Petrie School of Music. Um, so we have something for everyone. So whether you're looking to go the pre-med route or our amazing School of Education, um, we have something here for everyone. And even if you're undecided, which is okay to not know what you wanna be when you grow up. I don't know what I wanna be when I grow up. We'll find something that you can study to go on later in life with. Um, we have 13 athletic programs. We are NCAA Division II here at Converse. And with us going co-ed, which you may or may not have heard about, we will have uh, six male sports that will be starting in the fall of 2021. Um, so we've got men's basketball, soccer, cross country, track and field, tennis, and volleyball that we are adding to our athletic roster. Um, we do give athletic scholarships. So if you are looking to be a student athlete and you haven't yet, yet been contacted by a coach, um, at the end when my contact information is up, please feel free to email me and I will get you in touch with whatever coach you would like to talk to. Um, so, as I mentioned, we are going co-ed. So we will be going fully co-ed in the fall of 2021. Um, so we are changing a history that is 131 years old. And as an alum and a current staff member, I am incredibly excited for this change um, and this journey that we're kind of all on together. Um, in addition to going co-ed, we will also be changing our name to Converse University, which is also really exciting. Um, if you want to learn more about Converse or you want to learn more in one-on-one, -on -one, again, sign up for a visit, but we have another information session that we are doing through this CACRO circuit um, next week. So be sure to sign up because you'll get to hear from some current students. Um, you'll get to hear from admissions counselors um, and we'll dive a little bit deeper into what Converse has to offer. But I am going to slide it over to my neighbor down the street, Spartanburg Methodist, and Harry is going to talk to you about everything that they have to offer you. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks again, guys, uh, for tuning in tonight. Uh, we really appreciate your time. Um, again, my name is Harry Cocker, and I work in the admissions office at Spartanburg Methodist College. Um, what I'm going to try to do is share as much information as I can uh, with you in a nutshell about Spartanburg Methodist College. There's a lot of exciting things happening on our campus. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with our college, um, Spartanburg Methodist College is traditionally a two-year college. Uh, we were founded back in 1911, um, but uh, since uh, I'd say probably about a year and a half, we have transitioned to a four-year college. Um, so SMC, we offer six different associate's degrees, um, and then we offer six different concentrations for our bachelor's of uh, arts degree. Um, our degrees consist of uh, arts, fine arts, business, criminal justice, science, and religion. And then we have six different concentrations for our uh, bachelor's degree, which consists of business, English, history, religion, psychology, and criminal justice. Um, we're a smaller private college. Uh, we've got just over a thousand students. Um, a big uh, kicker to SMC is that, uh, and we're not shy about uh, sharing this information, we offer a full tuition scholarship to students who can graduate from a South Carolina high school with at least a 3.0 GPA. Um, so all you have to do is graduate from a South Carolina high school uh, with at least a 3.0 GPA and you can uh, receive a full tuition scholarship um, here at Spartan Methodist College. Um, <clears throat> so we're an incredibly good value uh, with our, our size um, and our student to, to faculty ratio. We're right around a 20 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So uh, professors and staff members get to know you by name. They hold you accountable uh, while you're a student here at, at Spartan Methodist College. and um, you just have a, a great experience um, um, as a student um, and, and you're not just a number, you're an actual um, individual and um, you're, you're pushed to, to your limits here at, at the college. Um, 
uh, like I said, there's a lot of exciting things to share with y'all tonight. Uh, we've had a lot of, a lot of big changes um, within the past couple of years. Um, I will say um, we are coming off our fourth year in a row of record enrollment here at SMC. So this year we just, again, uh, um, got right over a thousand students. And our goal and our, our desire is to kind of stay around that number so that way we can kind of stay true to our mission um, of serving students on an individual basis. Um, a big kicker to our bachelor's degree uh, that um, students ask and family members ask all the time is why should I go to SMC and earn my bachelor's degree now is our professional development aspect of our bachelor's degree. We're really big on professional development um, here so much so that we added in um, something called our KMAC core to our bachelor's degree. Um, it was named after our founder, uh, uh, David KMAC. And uh, he um, was a very big proponent of professionalism and, and work and school and things of that nature. So we added in 18 hours of professional development to the bachelor's degree. So students start that KMAC core um, as a junior. And the classes consist of a, a leadership course, professional communication course, a technology course that uh, incorporates an internship and a capstone course that kind of brings everything together uh, where uh, students kind of uh, put on a, uh, a, a final display of all their work um, and they graduate from here with in the hopes of hopefully already having a, a job lined up um, or, or at least more of a, uh, a an idea of where they want to uh, what direction they want to pursue for their career. Um, so uh, again professional development um, we get the question a lot is just with us being affiliated with the United Methodist Church, do you have to be Methodist to come to Spartan Methodist College? The answer to that is no. We um, probably have over 20 different um, denominations represented on campus. You don't even have to be religious to come to Spartan Methodist College. Um, but we do have a chapel on campus for students that they can participate in on a weekly basis. So, uh, for instance, every Wednesday we do not um, have classes from 11 to 12 and we have chapel services. We have a chaplain on campus. Uh, Reverend Tim Drum that speaks to our students and we also have um, guest speakers that come in um, that really allows our students to take a break from class and uh, get involved um, with the chapel services or whatever the, the topic is on that day to get their, their mind off their studies. Um, we just finished um, around a year ago our brand new fitness center. It's over 4,000 square feet um, and uh, students love it. It's a great place to work out on campus and to, to again get your mind off your studies. Um, I tell students all the time that we have everything set up here at Spartan Methodist College for you to be successful, um, whether that's um, the religious aspect of, of the college, um, the academic aspect with our, our majors and degree programs. Uh, we have a writing center and we've got tutoring led. Um, we have tutoring services from student led um, opportunities or professor led opportunities. Um, and uh, and everything is, is aligned so that way you can have a, a great academic experience. Um, uh, in terms of applying, um, our application doesn't take too long. It's about a 10 to 15 minute application. Um, students can apply and as soon as you apply, all we need is a copy of your high school transcript. Um, and you can send that to me directly. Um, my contact information will be provided at the end of this uh, presentation. Um, so again, just apply and it's free. There's no application fee and uh, send us a copy of your transcript and then we'll be able to, to get you processed. Um, but uh, just a, it's a great college. Students have uh, the opportunity to uh, uh, live on campus. You can live at home. We have over seven different residential halls. Uh, we've got sports on campus, pretty much all bo uh, men's and women's sports. We've got baseball, softball, soccer, basketball, cross country track. Um, and so there's a lot of opportunities there. Um, and uh, we, we would love to have you. Um, so if you have any further questions or um, you know, anything that I haven't covered tonight, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm gonna pass it over to uh, my neighbor um, down the road, uh, Eric Chapman at Upstate. Um, Eric. All right, good evening. And uh, once again, my name is Eric Chapman. I'm our Assistant Director for Freshman Enrollment here at USC Upstate and I'm excited to be able to share some things about um, Upstate with you today and about the Spartanburg area as well. Um, I was a student at Upstate and uh, I was involved in athletics so um, I am um, a proud alumni of the university and enjoyed my time here and, and as, a, as a staff member now 
So I have a wide range of experience. If you have questions, you can go ahead and start asking some of those and, and ask us some of those at the end as well. Um, Upstate is home to about 6,000 Spartan students and we do have um, students from 29 states and 14 different nations. So there's a wide variety of students here in our student body to meet people from all over, not just the United States and every county in South Carolina, but from other countries as well. Um, we are, for the second year in a row, the number one ranked public regional college in the South by US News and World Report. Uh, so we're very excited about that. That was just officially announced two days ago for us. Um, so I'm glad to be able to share that with you today. And with 6,000 students um, and the size of our campus with over 500 faculty members, that does put our student faculty ratio in the 18 to one range. So you're gonna have um, really strong interaction with your professors. They're gonna know you by name. Um, I still see professors from when I was a student here that still know who I am and are glad to see that I'm doing well uh, and care about not just your education, but it, your future as well. Um, we do have over 40 different majors and degree programs. The top programs for us here are gonna be nursing, business, and education with our three professional programs. Exercise and sports science is a very rapidly growing program as well. And then we have um, new programs, uh, one in cybersecurity, one in community health, and then we've just added five programs in business. So um, normally you would just be able to major in business and have a business administration degree with a concentration in management or accounting or finance. Well, now you can actually come here and you'll actually have your degree in business management, business finance, business accounting. So we've added five majors for that, including supply chain management. Um, but all of our majors are, um, are great here at Upstate. You're gonna learn from professors who are in the tops in their field. And you're gonna be able to learn from people, especially in schools like business that have been CEOs of major corporations. They can teach you from experience that they've had as well, not just teach you from the book. Uh, we do have 15 division one uh, NCAA programs as well uh, in the Big South Conference. And uh, we have a great student life on campus, including 90 different clubs and organizations, 13 nationally affiliated fraternities and sororities. We have campus events all throughout the year for help you get plugged in on campus. Um, and that does include things like our Upstate 48, the 48 days of nonstop events at the beginning of each semester. Um, the stadium party, uh, so everybody comes out, which we didn't get to have this year because of COVID, unfortunately. Um, but we're all um, adapting to the change in times here for right now, hoping to get back to normal soon. Um, Upstate does have applications uh, live right now. And as many of you have coming up some college application days, our applications are free through November the 15th as long as you select college application day at the end of your application. Um, we do also accept SAT or ACT fee waivers. Um, if you have one of those, you would just need to send those to our admissions office after you submit your application. And then this year we have decided to go test optional. For each one of our schools, it's probably gonna mean a little bit something different, but what it means for us is that if you have a, if you apply with a 30, uh, in the top 30% of your class with a 3.0 higher GPA, we can meet you without test scores. Um, if you don't meet those requirements, we would require test scores to make a decision for you. Um, and then if you do meet our admissions requirements without test scores, just keep in mind that to qualify for any state scholarships like Life, Hope, or Paul Meta Fellows, or to qualify for any university scholarships, you will need test scores, so you're not exempt from that. Um, but to make an admissions decision, we, we won't need test scores. Um, I do want to, uh, once again, just thank you for joining us. And if you have any more questions about Upstate, uh, as we get towards the end, just feel free to submit those during our question and answer session. And I'm going to turn the reins over to Rhett um, with Walford. All right, well, hey, good evening, everyone. Thank you all for tuning in uh, tonight um, to learn about not just our institution specifically, but also to get, learn, get to learn more about Spartanburg as a whole. So we appreciate your time. Um, to reintroduce you to Wofford, we're a small school in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Um, the current enrollment right now at Wofford is roughly 17, 25, give, give or take a few. Um, we have about 40 states that are represented as well as 25 different countries. So we, uh, we want students that are from all over the country, all over the world. Um, only about 50% of our population is from the state of South Carolina. So we do want students um, from all over. Uh, we are a small private liberal arts college, which means we do emphasize a well-rounded education. Uh, yes, I want you to be an expert in your particular field, but I also want you to be exposed to a variety of areas as well. So that's what we emphasize. Um, part of that education is, is our unique academic structure. So Wofford has what's called a four-one-four semester schedule. 
four months for the fall, one month of January called interim, and then four months for the spring. Now the month of January, that interim semester is meant to be a time that you're taking classes that are either outside of your major or something very unique to your major. So for example, one of my favorite classes that we offer is actually a Rubik's Cube class where students are learning algorithms, but it's done through the Rubik's Cube. So it's classes of that nature that still have an academic component, but are done in a fun and unique way. Also during interim, it's very common to do more of an independent study. Maybe that's research or some kind of community service. Um, we actually had a student who wanted to watch all the episodes of Friends and talked about how each person's personality made up the show. So that was done in, as a psychology class. So once again, done in a fun, unique way and outside of the typical framework of the classroom. Also during this interim semester, that month of January, it's very common for students to also get some experience outside of the classroom, such as an internship or getting clinical experience. That's something that we encourage all students to do. For example, um, pre-medicine to go on into medical school is our largest program at Wofford. Um, we have a great relationship with Spartanburg Regional Hospital as well as Prisma and Greenville. So getting clinical experience is gonna be readily available. Um, you know, whether that's getting experience locally, whether that's going abroad to get experience, whether that maybe you wanna to go to, to Seattle or Atlanta or New York or wherever to go get an internship, you're gonna be able to do those things as well. Um, so I mentioned study abroad. That's also one thing that's very, very common for our students to do. And actually Wofford consistently ranks in the top 10 in the nation for study abroad. Uh, so actually about 65% of our entire student body will go abroad at least once during the time at Wofford. So it's an immensely common thing for a variety of reasons. Uh, number one is the availability of places to travel. Um, we've been to 70 countries on all seven continents. So if there's a place that you just really want to go to, more than likely you'll be able to do that. And that's once again, 200 different programs. Um, but it's also some important to know with study abroad that all of the classes that you take abroad are guaranteed to be transferable back to Wofford so that you know that you're on the same academic schedule as if you were on our campus as well. Um, also, it's important to know with going abroad is the cost and what financial aid would look like. If you go during the fall or the spring semesters, your entire financial aid package will travel with you. So it's gonna be financially feasible for every single student at Wofford to go abroad. And that's one of the most common reasons that we see students will go abroad is it, because it is going to be financially feasible. Um, we also want students to be involved on our campus as well, of course. So Wofford does offer over a hundred different student organizations, whether that's academic organizations, social clubs, such as Greek Life, about 51% of our students are involved in Greek life, religious organizations, student government, athletics. Um, and speaking of athletics, Wofford is a division one school. We're actually one of the smallest D1 schools in the nation. So we like to think it's the best of both worlds where you still get that small college atmosphere with division one athletics. And last year we ranked 18th in the nation for basketball. So you can still have that type of division one college experience and then have 17 students in the classroom. So that, that's something that we truly do emphasize. But also if you get to campus and you don't see a specific organization that you're interested in, but you're still really passionate about something, then please bring that to our campus. So if you just love underwater basket weaving and you want to do that at Wofford, then, then please bring that to our campus. So we want you to continue to pursue the things that you're passionate about. Um, also at Wofford, we, all, we heavily emphasize your professional development. The goal of going to college is to get out of college and get into your career. So we focus heavily on your preparation. And that's building a resume and a cover letter, working with your interview skills. As I mentioned earlier, we want every student to go on to do an internship or get some clinical experience to build a professional experience early while they're in school to give them a competitive advantage to get into graduate school or their profession. Um, we also focus heavily on entrepreneurship. That's a very important thing. So if you have an idea for a business or maybe you've already created one in high school and you wanna to continue to pursue that, you're gonna be able to do that as well. But once again, the whole goal is to get you out of college and into your career or into graduate school. So we focus heavily on your placement. So 99% of our graduates were either in graduate school or their profession within six months after graduating. And that's after an 80% graduation rate in four years. So the vast majority of students that start at Wofford will stay at Wofford, will graduate in four years, and then be employed within six months. 
And also a really interesting statistic that came out by Forbes a few years ago that our graduates on average had the highest starting salary out of every college in the state of, the, of South Carolina. So not only are you finding a job fairly quickly, but it's typically a pretty good job too. So that placement is immensely important to our students. Um, also, we use the Common App as, as mentioned earlier. Um, as, you're, as all y'all are starting to evaluate where you want to go to school, it's very important to understand what colleges are looking for in the college search process. And we're, as we're evaluating students, what we want to see in those students. So Wofford evaluates applications holistically which means that we look at a variety of things to make an admission decision. Yes, your GPA and test scores are important, but I wanna to get to know you as, as well as I can to make an educated decision on your admission. So we look at five factors. Number one is your GPA. We don't just look at what's listed on your transcript, but I'm actually gonna recalculate your GPA and I'm only focusing on your core curriculum, math, science, social studies, English, foreign languages. We also focus heavily on your academic rigor. How are you challenging yourself in the classroom? So anytime that you take classes that are adding rigor to your schedule, it's going to boost up your application. So anything that's beyond the college prep level, so that's an honors class, AP, dual enrollment, IB, anything like that where you're adding rigor to your schedule is gonna boost up your application. We also look at the test scores, both the SAT and the ACT. Um, we do a super score with both of those exams which means if you take an exam more than once, we're gonna combine those sections to give you the overall highest score. It's also important to know that Wofford is test optional. We've been test optional for three years now. Um, the role of being test optional at Wofford is if you feel like your score is a good representation of how successful you are, then we encourage you to submit. But it's important to know at no point will it hurt you to submit your score. It can only ever benefit you. So we're, you're certainly encouraged to, to, to submit your scores. Um, also, it's really important to know that we want to get to know you beyond just the quantitative factors. So I want to get to know who you are as an individual. So we look at things such as the essay. The essay is a great way for you to introduce yourself to me, tell me why you're interested in Wofford, but what information can you give me to help me know you better? That's why that's so important. Also, your extracurricular activities. If you've chosen to invest your time in some capacity outside of the classroom, it obviously means something to you, so it's going to mean something to your application. So all those factors that I mentioned go into your admission decision, but they also go into your merit-based aid, which typically makes up the bulk of your financial aid is the academic merit. So the essay that you write, the extracurriculars that you list do affect your decision and they do affect your financial aid package. So please proofread, I'm sure you all will, um, but those things are certainly important. Um, it's also important to know when to apply. There's three periods of which to apply. I mentioned we use the Common App. Um, so the first application is an early decision. Early decision is for students to say, I want to go to Wofford 100% and I want to be done with the application process as quickly as I can. That is a binding application, meaning if accepted, you are committing to come to the college. The deadline for that would be November 1st. Um, there's also early action. Early action is really for students that say, I'm really interested in Wofford, but I'm still evaluating my options. And so the deadline for that would be November 15th and that's non-binding. There's also regular decision, which is really for those that find Wofford later in the process. Um, that's non-binding as well, and that would be January 15th. So whatever one seems the most applicable to you, I would encourage you to apply. Um, also, it's important to know what other types um, of financial aid may be considered. So I mentioned merit-based aid, um, but it's also important to know that Wofford recognizes all state-based aid, so Pemetta Fellows, Life, Hope, all of those are we're going to recognize. We also encourage all families to submit the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid. Um, regardless of your household income, we encourage you to submit that because that can consider you for federal-based aid, need-based aid, but other institutional grants as well. So that's why it's important. So once again, merit-based aid, state-based aid, federal-based aid, um, institutional grants, we wanna do as much as we can to make it as financially feasible for all students. And that's one thing that's important to know as you're evaluating colleges, don't just let the sticker price scare you regardless of that institution. The beauty of a private school is financial aid is typically much more readily available than at a public school. So those, those can often offset each other. So make sure you're going through the process to actually see what your financial aid package would be. Um, I know we've all given you a lot of information very quickly, but we appreciate your time. Um, once again, my name is Rhett Sapo from Wofford College. Um, you'll see my information later. So please, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to ask.
Michelle, do you want to jump us off? About yeah, what? I'll start. So um, obviously our presentation is called A Beautiful Day in the Berg. So how could we possibly talk about all these amazing colleges that are here without actually talking about Spartanburg? Um, so as you can see from the slide, it just has some information for those of you that maybe aren't from the area um, or haven't been to the area. Um, and so you can see we're conveniently located to a lot of other cities that have a lot going on, but we ourselves have a lot going on. Um, so one of my favorite things about Spartanburg, I moved um, to Spartanburg about a year ago. I had lived in Greenville previously, um, which as you can see is 30 minutes away. Um, I love live music. So I am a sucker for a live Band. It doesn't matter if it's bluegrass, jazz, oldies, cover bands, all original. Doesn't matter. I love live music. Um, and Spartanburg does a great job of having live music all throughout. So there's a great venue called Freight Yard um, that's an outdoor family friendly venue and they will have live music in the spring after we all have a little bit of cabin fever from the winter. Um, every Thursday they shut down a portion of Main Street and will bring out different bands from different genres um, and that's free to attend and you can go get food from one of the great restaurants and bring it out and listen to music. Um, there's Main Street that also has live music and lots of different places here on Main Street um, and surrounding that have live music and live entertainment for you to enjoy, typically free of charge, which is even better because when you're a college student, you're broke. So free is good. And Harry, what's your favorite part about Spartanburg? Yeah, um, definitely. Um... Love Spartanburg, been in Spartanburg my entire life, uh, born and raised in Spartanburg. Um, it's a great place to come to college. Um, you know, we've, uh, you've got several different colleges, seven total in Spartanburg. Um, and I know, I know Rhett's going to kind of talk about that, but um, my favorite part would probably be where we're located here in Spartanburg with, uh, in terms of how we're uh, so close to all these different um, uh, attractions and places to get to, whether that's um, the beach uh, or the mountains. Um, <clears throat> some of my uh, my favorite uh, things to do uh, here in upstate of South Carolina is to to drive to the to, to the mountains. Um, I love to go hiking. Um, uh, just recently here, I was up in Dupont State Forest and got to see some pretty cool waterfalls. Um, and so Spartanburg, where we can, you can get to, to the mountains within less than an hour. You can get to the beach and to the coast of South Carolina in less than four hours. Um, you can uh, get to the city of Charlotte or go to Atlanta. Um, so there's lots of things to do on the weekend or on your time off from, from your studies. Um, and so that would probably be my favorite part about being in Spartanburg. Eric, what's your favorite part? <laughs> I think you're, 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 you're muted. muted. <laughs> Sorry about that. For real. <laughs> got all kinds of technical difficulties tonight. So uh, what's one more? Um, I, my favorite part about Spartanburg is definitely going to be the restaurant scene. Um, I'm a big guy. I've always been a big guy. I come from a big family, and we, we like to eat and go out and uh, explore the downtown scene. So we've come a long way in what we have to offer. Um, you've got, if you like, um, like the Latin food, Mexican food, you've got Nacho Taco, Willie Taco. Um, you've got places that if you like to have a more classy scene and you want to go out on a rooftop, we've got a rooftop bar in downtown Spartanburg. You can go see the view of the whole uh, downtown area. We've got um, plenty of places that have no nice scenes, but they have great food as well. Steaks, sushi, um, We've got a um, place at the freight yard that has like more of like a street meat style, uh, style theme to it. Um, so just great eateries, Hope City Scoops. If you like ice cream with that sugar rush, um, we have a little place called, uh, I think, what's it called? Little Cakes, I think. Um, they have these little, cu <laughs> little cupcakes and little other, other little things there, but have great little desserts and dairy things. Um, so no matter what you're looking for, um, we have it. And then you have places that have been here that are staples in the community, like the Beacon, which is um, not quite in downtown Spartanburg, but it's close by. If you want that, uh, if you need that extra grease to soak up any kind of bad things you got going on in your system. And then we've got places like the uh, Sugar and Spice, which is a drive-in place. It's been uh, here over 50 years that has actually ate lunch there today, had a chicken salad. It was delicious. Um, and then we've got a new place called the Flock Shop, which has all your chicken needs, fried chicken, chicken wings, chicken tenders, 
um, if you like the spice and a little bit of kick, and if you like things uh, that are a little bit out of the ordinary, like pimento cheese, macaroni and cheese. <laughs> I was skeptical myself, but it was pretty good. Um, so all kinds of things to get into involved in the restaurant scene, not only in downtown Spartanburg, but out from the surrounding community and close to all of our campuses. Um, so exciting if you like food and you want to come out. If you're a big foodie, you've got plenty of things to get involved in in Spartanburg. Um, so now I want to turn it over to Rhett and let's hear about uh, Rhett and what he thinks about his time in Spartanburg. Thank you all. Um, one of the most important things that we're all here talking about our colleges. It's, that's one thing I love about Spartanburg is the opportunities for students to continue their education. Um, you know, we mentioned earlier that there's seven colleges just in the county. I mean, so think about that. You have Wofford, Commerce, USC Upstate, SMC, um, VCOM Medical School, Sherman College for Contracted, Spartanburg Community College. So there is a variety of opportunities for students to study regardless of what their career paths interests are. You know, regardless of what they want to do in life and where they want to go, there's going to be an option for them to pursue an education. And that's, we're all proponents, of course, for education. And that's something, you know, Spartanburg itself has a rich, you know, not, not just not just the higher education, but even at the secondary level and, you know, K-12 is all very strong in the county. And to see those students matriculate into college and to be able to bring students from all over the state, all over the country into the, the community of Spartanburg is always one of my favorite things to do and it's so funny because you go downtown you go out some eat, and more than likely you're going to bump into a college student so to me Spartanburg is kind of the quintessential college city and college town if you will just because there's colleges it seems like on every corner so they're going to have an opportunity um, you know to not just meet people from their institution but meet other students from other institutions as well so it, it has a rich environment for education and growing and you know but also as students are pursuing graduate school, um, they're wanting to get ex some experiential learning such as internships, regardless of what institution they attend. You know, we're, we're so lucky to be so saturated with industry locally. So finding an internship, all those things locally. So it is such a wonderful place to continue your, edu your education. Awesome, thanks, Rhett. Um, we're going to now get into, now you've heard all about Spartanburg and about our favorite things. We're going to get into some question and answer um, that can involve questions about Spartanburg, if you have them, or uh, just questions about um, our universities um, specifically or uh, general questions for us. All right, let's kick it off with uh, Converse College. We've got one for you. Um, we have a student that wants to know how professors how do your professors support you in and out of the classroom? Yeah, uh, well, I can definitely speak to that firsthand because as I said, I graduated from here. Um, so like we've all talked about our class ratio um, in the classroom, we're 12 to one. So our professors really know who you are um, and it, they take an invested interest in kind of where you want to go next or how can they support you here um, during your time at Converse. Um, the other thing about our professors is a lot of them will have different events at their house that we go to. I've been to, um, I think in my time here, I went to four different professors' houses, once for like brunch and like a barbecue and a study session. Um, so they're really able to kind of just do things a little bit differently. They're also able to teach a little bit differently. So you won't get out of your standard lecture and taking note classes, but sometimes you will get out of the classroom. So when it's beautiful, you'll end up just taking class outside just because, or in your biology class, you may end up on a hike here in Spartanburg collecting specimen for your next lab. Um, or I remember my junior year, uh, sorry, I'm being thrown off by the screen. Um, our, my junior year here at Converse, it was the week before um, midterms and I came in and the professor had pushed all the desks and chairs aside and was like, we're just gonna sit on the floor and we're gonna check in with each other. Midterms are in a week. And so I just wanna make sure everybody's on the same page and good to go. Um, so yeah, because of our size, our professors are just able to do things a little bit differently. Their care factor is a little, a little bit different. All right, let's get this next uh, question out to uh, Walford College. I think, Rhett, you might've touched on this a little bit, but um, I have a student that wants to know what type of financial aid is available. Yeah, great question. Um, like I mentioned in our uh, in my presentation earlier, that's something that there's always a misconception when it comes to private school, whether that's Wofford or not, you know any private school for that matter. 
cost is always a concern. So that's something that we always want to emphasize is it's very important for, for students to know the financial opportunities that are going to be available at our institution. So at, at Wofford specifically, uh, we put a major emphasis on merit-based day, so awarding students for the, the, the hard work they've done in the classroom, their extracurricular, so all those types of things, we want to reward them based off their merit-based aid. Um, you know, but we also want to offer students other types of institutional aid, whether that's grants they can apply for, art scholarships, whatever it may be. Um, of course, the FAFSA is very important. That's for all of our schools is the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid. So to get considered for need-based aid, federal-based aid, but also other grants um, at the institution as well. And then of course, state-based aid, Hope Life and Meta Fellows, all those want to be recognized as well. So I would encourage all students as you're going through the process of looking at institutions, don't let cost be a deterrent. Go through the process, apply, apply for scholarships and see what your financial aid package can be. Because if you just really want to be somewhere, you know, the institution will do as much as we can to make it as financially feasible for you. Awesome, thanks, Rhett. All right, we've got one for SMC now for uh, Harry. Um, we'll have a student, a little skeptical on you there, wants to know if they really have a 3.0 GPA, if they can uh, really qualify for a full tuition scholarship. <clears throat> Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> as long as the student graduates from a South Carolina high school and they have at least a 3.0 GPA, though, and you'll have to, to do like Rhett was saying, you'll have to submit the FAFSA um, and the financial aid office will, will review that as well. But if the, the student graduates with a 3.0, um, that's what we're looking at and they'll qualify for our full tuition scholarship. Um, uh, what I do tell students, if they do decide they want to live on campus, um, the tuition part is covered and then room and board is separate. Um, but uh, essentially what would happen is a student submits the FAFSA um, and then if the student qualifies for any other uh, aid, whether it be, you know, state scholarships or um, federal or, or um, you know, different types of grants or, or uh, whatever the situation may be, that can help go towards uh, room and board. Uh, but it really just depends on the student's situation. Um, but the tuition part is covered as long as the student has a 3.0 GPA. All right, awesome. Thanks, Harry. All right, we've got one for, uh, for myself now. Um, I have a student that wants to know if uh, they have to live on campus, and if they do, can they get a single room? Um, well, we do require students to live on campus if they live outside of a 50-mile radius. If you're from Spartanburg like myself, um, I just commuted to school, so I didn't, uh, I wasn't required to stay on campus. I, I was able to fill out an exemption form. But if you live outside a 50 mile radius, you would have to stay on campus this year unless something crazy were to happen like a pandemic because we didn't require students to stay on campus this year due to COVID-19. So um, if something were to still be going on with that, which hopefully we'll all be back to normal then, we do have exceptions to that rule um, if things like that were still going on. Um, and then about getting a single room, we do have a single room request form the earlier you can make your decision about where you're going to school and apply the better as for when it comes to uh, rooming assignments and getting a single room. Um, but we do have those available for you. And if you do have a special need for those, if there's a health reason or um, you have a disability that you really need to, you have to have a single room, you will be able to submit that request and you'll be considered for those um, in front of other people who may not have that same need as you have. Um, so those are available. Um, it does look like we're coming up on time. We've got about, one minute left before our, our hard out and Matt Cash comes back in and, and closes it out for us. Um, but if you do have any questions, you've got our contact information there. Um, please reach out to any one of us. So we'll be happy to help you with questions about our universities. And um, we, we enjoyed being able to uh, have this time with you tonight. Y'all timed that out like a champ. So uh, thank you all for joining us tonight. Uh, when you close this window, you will receive a link to a short four question survey. We would appreciate any feedback for those of you in the audience could provide for us. Um, also, this was just one of many sessions that are being offered. You can view the full schedule at cacro.org. That's C-A-C-R-A-O.org. Um, in about a week, you'll also uh, be able to sit, find this session and many others on the uh, CACRO website as well. Again, C-A-C-R-A-O.org. Thank you all for joining us and have a great evening.